So as usual, we've got some icebreakers here. Today we do a bit more than usual with a command line interface. So you can answer this icebreaker. This question, I didn't write it very well. The how do you run the same things over and over again, but with slightly different parameters? Um, so this is like you have 10 different data sets and you want to run the same code on all of them. Or you have uh, mm -hmm. like you have one data set and you need to run with 10 different values of some parameter. So how would you do that? OK, there's these other questions here, which we can try to answer in a bit. But we have a special guest with us. So Luca Franti is Hi. a is a uh, can you introduce yourself yeah sure uh, yeah so i'm uh, luca ferranti i'm uh, based in finland and at the moment i'm uh, finishing uh, my phd in uh, computer science and i'm also working in uh, industry as a julia software developer in a startup for ai so yeah, I'm Julia Enthusiast, and uh, in Finland, I organized this Julia Users Helsinki, this uh, small community of people in Helsinki area, or even outside the Helsinki area, who want to come together and uh, talk about Julia. Yeah, and, and you may wonder, why do we have a Julia visitor here in a Python course? Yeah, and indeed, and I, I, I brought the uh, white flag, <laughs> because, you know, I come in peace, and also want to live in one piece. Yeah. So, <laughs> But, I mean, my answer to that is that, why not? I mean... It's not like one language is better than another for everything, but there's all these yeah. different things here. And knowing more about different languages would have helped me in the future some, yeah. or in the past some. But also the idea is to have role models of different kinds of career paths. So Luca, can you tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are now? Like what's your background and how did you... Yeah. Like, yeah, so my mean? background is more like a, a computer science, a signal pro a statistical signal processing, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And uh, I, I was like, uh, when I think when I started doing my master thesis, uh, I had like the traditional story that uh, I was uh, uh, doing a lot of coding. At the beginning, I was doing in a very like painful way, like moving files around and that felt wrong. So I started like getting more into proper way and got... Um, like more into proper uh, scientific computing and uh, so on and also i start i heard about open source communities and uh, i was interested in that and at some point uh, julia came in uh, under my radar so i heard uh, about uh, this julia language that was for like uh, meant for like uh, scientific computing and researchers and i was pretty interested in it but uh, what uh, really like sparkled my enthusiasm about julia wasn't even like the technical features of Julia, because you know, at the beginner, I, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know like why it was good. Like I didn't know about internals or multiple dispatch or meta programming or whatever. Mm -hmm. what, what was cool is that um, uh, it was beginning of 2020. I had started my PhD, and uh, as you probably remember, COVID had also started, so I was stuck in my room, mm -hmm. and uh, I joined uh, the Julia Slack, and then uh, it was uh, like pretty cool to see that like. Uh, how like everybody was very friendly, how everybody was very active. And I was seeing like uh, famous people, like people of like popular Julia packages who were like sitting there asking my, uh, answering my dumb questions and getting me step by step. So it was like more this community feeling that really got me into open source. And uh, so I sticked to Julia. Then okay. I actually started writing documentation. So I was in this uh, uh, Google uh, season, uh, summer of docs. Uh, for like uh, writing documentations and I started like building a web page for a couple of libraries and writing documentation for libraries and then I was twice in this uh, Google Summer of Code program like doing more Julia programming mm -hmm. and after that I also found a job as a software developer Julian like a startup through like people I knew in the Julia community and I have of course like been um, using Julia in my research also for like for my PhD and for my own uh, research and uh, Julia is a pretty new language, right? Yeah, we celebrated the last year's 10 years of Julia. There was this uh, HackMD kind of a uh, yearbook where you could assign your experience of 10 years of Julia. So it uh, was, uh, I think, the first commit 
was from 2009 and the first uh, public release was from 2012 and it achieved the version 1.0 at the 2018. Mm -hmm. it, it was developed at MIT and um, the goal of Julia was to like solve this uh, so-called the two language problem. So, you know, you uh, encounter this problem that you start writing in Python and then you hit like some performance bottlenecks because, you know, Python is interpreted language and then you needed to rewrite it in C. Or also like uh, people who use Python, actually uh, under the hood, like a TensorFlow is written in C or like uh, a lot of libraries are written in C or Python. So, uh, sorry, in Python, I meant not Python. So, whereas in Julia, the uh, power about Julia is that uh, it allows to prototype and uh, achieve performance in the same language. So the the yeah. magic word here is multiple dispatch and there's a very inspiring talk like the a reasonable effectiveness of multiple dispatch from JuliaCon 2019, which explains uh, how it achieves uh, like both yeah. dynamicity and uh, performance. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um... Okay, so we're almost where we need to begin the next lesson. Um, I want maybe to give a couple Does links? anyone have any questions for Luca? No. Well, if you do, please write down there. Um, so, Luca, there's something I always ask people. So, what do you know now that you wish someone had told you at the start of your career? Yeah, so... Uh... What uh, for like more like my like open source career, like be involved in the uh, Julia community. Like uh, one thing that uh, I really wished people like uh, told me before, which uh, I learned kind of by experience is that uh, you like, you really don't need uh, to be scared to start and you don't need uh, to ask permission. That's a good thing about open source mm -hmm. that uh, like also at the beginning when, when I started, I was a bit shy, like also like, I was like, okay, maybe a first prototyping closed repository. Should I open it? Will uh, people just like uh, say it's uh, dumb or like, will people like uh, steal my job or stuff like that? And, but this doesn't happen in open source, at least not in Julia communities. Like, uh, uh, reasonable size uh, for it not to happen. So just put your code out there and uh, don't be afraid. Like, uh, you know, the best way to get the answer is not to ask the question, is to post the wrong answer. So just put your <laughs> code out where, put your work out there and people will help you. Like you don't need to be afraid of that. And actually similarly applies uh, to research, uh, at, at least like in my field, I don't need uh, to worry that much about uh, uh, scooping. So. My, uh, it's pretty cool that also a researcher can put my code, my work uh, out there publicly, and I'll just meet new people. So that, and maybe other quick yeah. thing about is that open source is not about code, it's about community. So uh, we have already a lot of people coding in open source, and of course, the more the merrier, but we also need the non-technical people in open source, people helping with writing documentation, people helping with uh, bringing people together, people helping with improving diversity and inclusion. So open source is really not about... Um, code, but it's more about community. And as I mentioned, like I got uh, like sparkled from Julia, not because of multiple dispatch, which I didn't know what it was, but because of people friendliness. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. And I can also say about what Lucas said about putting your code out there. If you want to be hired somewhere, like whenever I'm looking to hire people, having public code and saying that like being able to see things, that's a huge benefit there. Okay, but now we need to get started. Yeah, so, and Luca, uh, thanks thank for you. visiting. Yeah, I know, last I think... thing, if uh, you are in Finland, we have every month in Helsinki, this Julia Helsinki meetup, except not this month, but the next one is going to be on the 13th of December, and it's going to be especially for beginners about Julia. So we're going to be like intro about Julia and about uh, how to use Julia research and teaching. I also put in the notes, so 13th of uh, December, it, it's not official, it's not even on the website yet, but I can give you the spoiler of this. Congrats and uh, hope to see you there. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me, bye. Okay, bye. Um, so with that said, I guess we should get started for the day. Uh, Yes, so the first lesson is Tomas and I. Hello. Um, Tomas, hey. have you already introduced yourself? I think so. Um, right. I don't think so. 
Oh, okay. I Thomas, think this is my first appearance um, this year. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a research software engineer um, in Alta, at Alta University, um, working in Richard's group, um, and in general interested in um, programming. <laughs> <laughs> in general. Okay. 